everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get the arbitrary term, uh, like the nth term, in this case we're doing the ninth term, I guess, uh, in geometric sequences that involve variable parts. And basically it's the exact same as what you do in an integer question, except your um, ratio could also have variables and your initial term could also have a variable part. But otherwise it's the, basically the exact same thing. So let's look at this first one. Um, first thing I'm gonna notice is like this is negative and this is, like this next one is, is not negative, so it's positive. So obviously what we're multiplying by, our ratio has to be negative, okay? So I like to treat negative signs completely separately from the integer part because it's so easy to forget that your ratio, your common ratio, uh, could be negative. So I'm gonna start, and I'm doing that right away, before I even do my initial term, like that negative sign to me is like a huge red flag, like that's just a mistake waiting to happen. So I'm gonna write that down first. Normally I would start with the initial term because that's sort of the, you know, the obvious place to start. You just write down your initial term because that's given to you. Uh, but because of that negative ratio, I really, really wanted to, to notice that. Now, this one's a little bit confusing because the two in the denominator, the two in the denominator disappeared. So what did you multiply by to get rid of a two in the denominator? Well, you actually multiply by two, and sure enough, again, over here, it's times two. So our ratio is negative two and our, uh, for the integer part. And now we need to look at the variable part. So our variable part, well, this is x to the one, right? If there's nothing there, it's x to the one. And then it goes up to x cubed, and then it goes up to x to the seventh. So each time we've added three powers of x, which is an x cubed. Excuse me for writing over what I've written before, but there we go, uh, x cubed. So it's negative two x cubed is our ratio. And I've sort of crowded it a little bit, so let me write it down here. So there's our initial term, there's our ratio, and we wanna find the ninth term. Now the ninth term, let's just think of our formula, uh, t, n is the initial term raised uh, times the ratio raised to the number minus one, right? One less than the term number. So in this case, term eight is our initial term uh, times the ratio to the eighth power. So essentially what we need to do is we just, I guess, plug it in. So T eight is our initial term, which we have, negative three over two, x times our ratio, which is negative two x cubed, raised to the eighth power. Okay, now we need to do two to the eighth. Um, two to the eighth is 256, I'm pretty sure, and negative, negative to the eighth power uh, becomes positive. So t eight is negative three over two x, and let's do my ratio part in purple, 256. X cubed to the eighth means we've got eight sets of three X's, which is a total of 24 X's, right? Three times eight. And uh, so then this two, this two is going to reduce this by half, which leaves us 128. 128 times three um, is, uh, let me think. So T eight is going to be so negative um, 128 is going to be, uh, let's see, 4, uh, 8, 3, 384, I think. Yeah, 384, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then x times x to the 24th is x to the 25th. So there's your eighth term. Let's move on to this next one. This next one's actually easier. Uh, it looks sort of scarier because you've got binomials, but our initial term here is 5x, and our ratio, our ratio is just this binomial. Right? We have seven x minus two in this first one. We have seven x minus two twice in the second one, which means we've multiplied by seven x minus two twice. So then the ninth term, uh, same thing again, right? T eight is going to be your initial term times the ratio to the eighth. So it's just T eight is five x seven x minus two to the eighth power. And we're just not gonna expand that because expanding that would be like a problem in and of itself. So there you have it. That's how you can handle variable parts in geometric sequence questions.